Welcome into College Football Now by Chat Sports. It's Harrison Graham and James Yoder for the second to last college football playoff rankings. We're live on Chat Sports, but after Michigan beat Ohio State again, James, we are live on the Michigan Football Report as well. Congrats on the win. And why don't you welcome in your audience? Yeah, now. welcome into the Michigan Football Report audience. We haven't done live in a long time. Funny enough, it, it's been since summer of 2020, uh, peak corona. We were playing video games. I think the last time we went live on the show was actually the Michigan-Ohio State game, college football, uh, NCAA 14 yep. game that I played. Beat Ohio State, ironically, Harrison, in the snow. As crazy as that <laughs> would turn out uh, 18, 19 months later, whatever it is, uh, as that happens. So welcome into the Michigan Football Report audience, as well as Chat Sports, simulcasting across both channels. So if you hear us address Michigan, address the main Chat Sports audience, understand we're bringing it to you live on both channels. Yep, absolutely. And as we always do, we'll let the audience build up a little bit on both channels. So shout out your city, let you know. Let us know where you're watching from. I'll be giving shout outs on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel. Uh, James will, of course, provide some shout outs on the Michigan Football Report. So let us know where you guys are watching from. We got 130 people watching live on Chat Sports. Uh, John says Harrison and James equals Bama haters. No one has more respect for Nick Saban and Bama than me. I just think this is the worst Bama team in seven years, but they're still really good. Uh, Dominic is in New Orleans. Jeremy's in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. EJ is in Atlanta. We've got uh, Trump 2020 in Philadelphia. Uh, Jack is in New York City. Jonathan is in El Paso. Go Blue Michigan from Dame Dalla. Hey, hey, Michigan Football Report is live as well. If you want to go hop in with some more Michigan fans, give us some more shout-outs, I'll give you some here. I got uh, Michael Harris. Uh, oh, he asked me. I thought he was saying Vegas. Michael Harris, how was Vegas? Phenomenal. I spent an absurd amount of money. I'm still trying to hide the credit card uh, transactions from my uh, my wife. You know, she hope she's not watching. Uh, just <laughs> if, here's a little key tip, Harrison. If you're going to go and blow a lot of money, if you have like five credit cards, you put a little on each one. It's tougher to, uh, to track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I've got uh, Dre Nine on Fire, Go Blue from Toledo, Ohio. Shout out Toledo, Review Media from Florida, Isaac Cook from Tennessee, Zach Smalls from Toledo, Ohio. Uh, Dirt Trails just says, Let F and Go, Go Blue. Austin Holland from Battle Creek, Michigan, uh, home of the uh, cereal brand, right? Uh, what's it? Not Battle Creek. You guys know Kellogg's. Uh, Second on Michigan from Brandon 177.6 and uh, Brano the Lame just says the leaders and best. That's where he's from. Uh, Trey Lied says Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, shout out to him. Uh, maybe I've crossed paths with you on Saturday night. When I was in rare form, Harrison, with our producer Jeremy, celebrating Vegas like two guys uh, 15 years apart in age have never done. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. I'm seeing a lot of Go Blues on, on our main channel, by the way. You see the link below, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. We are also live on our Michigan Football Report yep. channel. Uh, let's get into some of the nuts and bolts of the college football playoff. We're one week away from the final rankings, really five days. It'll be this Sunday. We'll be live for that as well. But who's most likely to lose this week out of these four teams? Alabama, who faces Georgia, type A. Cincinnati, who faces Houston, type C. Michigan, who faces Iowa, type M. Oklahoma State, who faces Baylor, type O, if you think it's them. I think it's clearly Alabama, James. This is the first time in a while that Bama not only is an underdog, but a legitimate underdog. Like, they're expected to lose the SEC championship game against Georgia. Yeah, I, I equate this a lot of the ways to Ohio State-Michigan. Georgia has been in their shadow. They haven't beat them much. They went to the national title game. Alabama won there four years ago. And Georgia wants this bad. And pregame, obviously Michigan won the game, but pregame, Ohio State was seen as the better team. It didn't turn out that way. Pregame, Georgia's seen the better team, and Georgia's playing better. Alabama had you yep. know, one of their worst two or three games of the year outside of that last drive in overtime just in their last game against Auburn on the road. So I th really think it's uh, Alabama is most likely to lose, but let us know what you guys think. Got a lot of A's coming in and quite a few C's on the Michigan stream, Harrison. What are they saying over yeah, there, man? Yeah, Haroom says uh, Alabama. I'm seeing a C from Naraya from uh, Cincinnati. You wonder if Potential Luke Fook fickle the Notre Dame rumors become a distraction for Cincinnati. Chad says Alabama. Fish says Alabama. Zepp says Alabama as well. Let's ask this question. I think this is actually the most intriguing part about tonight. Who will be ranked higher? Who should be ranked higher? Notre Dame or Oklahoma State? Now, Notre Dame just lost their coach. Brian Kelly took the LSU job if you uh, – if you missed that, then uh, I don't know where you've been because it's yep. been the craziest college football coaching carousel probably in the history of the sport. Or is it Oklahoma State? I think it should be Oklahoma State, and I think it will be Oklahoma State. Do you agree? 
I don't know if I agree. It's really tough to say. I have paid such little attention to these teams. Like when Notre Dame, when they lost to Cincinnati, and then I saw the slate of games they had, they had like five or six what looked to be losable games after Cincinnati. Now, they won them all, but I just kind of wrote them off my mind. And then Oklahoma State, like this wasn't their team. This wasn't a high-powered offense. This is a defensive team. So I'll say this week it'll be Notre Dame, but the committee will just – Hold it in their pocket. Well, now Oklahoma State is a college or is a is a conference champion. Should they win the Big Twelve championship, and then they would jump over and potentially uh, coming up here on the final rankings, which we will be live uh, on both channels. If Michigan, of course, beats Iowa, we'll do live on both channels coming up on Sunday at noon. It's the final college football playoff top twenty-five breaking down who are going to be the top, the four teams. So let's know type one for Notre Dame who will be higher, who should be higher, and two for Oklahoma State. Rashard Lee says one. Um, MT Ricky says two. Uh, Crazy Boy says one. A pretty split between the two teams. I'll say this. If Oklahoma State finishes with a win over Oklahoma and another top ten win over Baylor, whereas Notre Dame beat an unranked who they, Stanford, who's yep. awful, and they don't have a game this week, I don't see how Notre Dame holds off Oklahoma State in the final rankings. Mm -hmm. Let's break down how last week shook down, James, because rivalry week was epic. Uh, not for Georgia, though. They took care of business against Georgia Tech. Uh, Ohio State, obviously, they're out. They lose to Michigan 42-27. to Obviously, uh, uh, you have a lot of thoughts about that one as Michigan picks up its biggest win in over a decade, I would say. Yep. 100%. Yeah, what a game, Harrison. Uh, I actually rewatched my post game show. I did not realize the level of just screaming and yelling that I did, but <laughs> it was a wild time, man. I'll tell you what. Um, I convinced myself in a lot of ways that it might never happen in my lifetime. I'm not even joking. Uh, they got the job done. It's super exciting to see. And now, like I said this on the Michigan Football Report yesterday and today, I think the path to the championship game for Michigan, if they don't make it to the title game right now, I actually think most Michigan fans would be let down. Now, they'd still be happy with the season because you beat Ohio State, because you went 11-1 in the regular season, but you beat Iowa, you're going to be going ideally against Cincinnati or yeah. maybe Notre Dame, maybe Oklahoma State potentially in that uh, in that semifinal game. I think Michigan will be favoring anybody they play. Now, if Alabama beats Georgia, Michigan has to play Georgia in the 2-3, then I think it's a different story. Yeah, I mean, look, goals change, right? <laughs> the mm -hmm. goal coming into the year for Michigan was probably eight or nine wins and now I think I don't think shooting less than getting to the national title game is unreasonable I think there's uh, plenty of reasons to think why they should win this week and of course uh, get to that title game as well but it'll be a very interesting to see kind of where Bama and uh, Michigan shake out tonight at two versus three we'll see how that plays out what continues to not be a huge discussion James is the Heisman Trophy. Mm -hmm. Who the hell is going to win the Heisman Trophy? Bryce Young is the betting odds favorite. C.J. Stroud is second, but Stroud can't play again. There's nothing he can do to impress the voters. So I think if Young plays at least well, mm -hmm. even in a loss to Georgia, he's going to win it. But – should he win it? I mean, should someone else be in the mix at this point? Yeah, get your comments in both on the Michigan stream and the chat sports live college football playoff rankings. Who should win the Heisman Trophy? You're right, who will win the Heisman Trophy? I said this a few times. I don't want to be too much of a Michigan homer, but we all also go into a Michigan audience here too. I think Aiden Hutchinson getting that touchdown overturned against Michigan State caused him potentially being more seriously considered. But if he repeats the performance against Ohio State here against Iowa, gets three or four sacks, Harrison, yep. and Georgia crushes Alabama – I think there is a legitimate chance that the voters just threw up their hand and say, we can't give it to a guy in Bryce Young who looked terrible in two straight games in the year. We can't give it to C.J. Stroud who just got beat and dominated by Aiden Hutchinson. Let's just give it to Hutchinson. Also, Hassan Haskins from Michigan. He's not going to have the biggest stats in the world, but if he goes to 150 and Harbaugh is just like, give it to him another time, give it to him another time in the five, inside the 10-yard line, and he gets four touchdowns, three touchdowns, he got yep. five on Saturday. Then all of a sudden, Harrison, he'll be sitting there with 21, 22, 23 touchdowns, leading the country in scoring uh, and having the two biggest games of the year against Ohio State, conference title game. I think a Michigan guy has... 50-50 odds to win it at this yeah. point. I honestly believe that. A couple quick shout-outs. Uh, Jordan Davis, uh, I don't think he's going to get in there. <laughs> Bryce Young, Hassan Haskins, I am seeing a Hutchinson as well. Uh, it's interesting. It's wide open, and I do think you're right. If Bryce Young struggles mightily and they lose and Michigan blows out uh, 
uh, Iowa and Haskins and or Hutchinson have big games, I think they should at least uh, uh, get an invite to New York City. If you want to go bet on who's going to win the Heisman, there's only one place to do it. That is BetUS. These are the current Heisman odds. Bryce Young is the favorite. It's kind of wild. Hutch and uh, Hassan Haskins aren't even on the current odds. Dark Horse, can he pick it goes crazy and Young loses? Who knows? Could happen. Plus 1,400 odds. If you want to go bet and make some money, go do it with BetUS. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code CHAT125. When you deposit $100 when you sign up, you're going to get $125 for free. Betting on sports is fun. If you don't have stakes in the game, it's even funner because then it gives you more of a reason to watch. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code CHAT125. You don't have to bet just on the Heisman. Go bet on Championship Saturday. If you love college football, like the video both here on Chat Sports and on the Michigan Football Report. Hit that thumbs up icon. We got 330 people watching on Chat Sports and only 26 likes. That's just, <laughs> I, I mean, the, the math there, it's just almost impossible. Less than 10% have liked the video. Come on, let's double those numbers. Let's get to 60 likes at least. So hit that thumbs up icon like the video both here on chat sports and of course if you're watching on the michigan football report as well all right harrison we're just a few minutes from the committee sending us the results i did want to address a couple of things that are developing here late into the evening afternoon evening for michigan football so directly going to talk about that two things are happening one domani jackson just left michigan uh 36 hours ago and he has put a countdown on his instagram that is set to go off in about two hours from now i've got it actually right up Two hours and two minutes. Domani Jackson is just at Domani Jackson on Instagram. Is that going to be an announcement? I don't know. Just in the past day or so, he has said, look, I'm going to wait till December 15th, signing day, to make my decision. Could he move it up? Potentially. I think, I don't know if it's good news or bad news. Now, USC did have Malachi Nelson is his name, the top quarterback in 2023 class. Malachi. Malachi, whatever his name is. Just oh left, uh, uh, left uh, North, uh, Oklahoma, decommitted from them, and now is committed to USC. So, yeah. I don't know if that's good news for Michigan or not, but we'll see in two hours if it has anything to do with this commitment. Another thing, Michigan's director of player personnel, Courtney Morgan, who's been with the program for only about nine months or so, or so right now, has been offered an on-field coaching position by Washington. Their, form, their new head coach uh, has co former coaching ties. They work together at Fresno State. He has a job offer on the table. Uh, it seems likely that he's going to take it unless Michigan, of course, makes him a similar job offer. Why would he take it? Of course, he will make about $300,000 more a year in this job than what Michigan's currently paying him. And frankly, if he gets the offer and is making over twice what he currently makes, I think Courtney Morgan will be moving on to Michigan in well under a year, and Michigan will be back searching for their third, you know, it'll be the third director of player personnel mm. recruiting coordinator, whatever you want, in the 2021 calendar year. So just want to address those two things for the Michigan football fans watching. All right, Harrison, let's get into the top 25 projections before we get the official numbers from the committee. I got Condoleezza Rice, Condoleezza Rice in my ear, but here are projections. Take them away. Well, first of all, that's why you subscribe to the Michigan Football Report. News is happening on the fly, and we got you covered. Uh, obviously, these rankings toward the bottom don't matter as much. I think Minnesota probably jumps back in after a win over Wisconsin. Arkansas should stay in there. Houston, Clemson, San Diego State as well. You get into the top 20 here. I I don't know what to do with Wisconsin. The committees liked them, but then they lay an egg against Minnesota. We'll see where they land. Texas A&M loses to LSU. They're certainly going to slide a little bit. NC State at 18. Utah at 17. Wake Forest at 16. They, of course, will take on Pittsburgh in the ACC title game. We got Pitt at number 15. Iowa at 14, playing for a Big Ten championship and a right to go to the Rose Bowl. BYU at number 13. Oklahoma at 12. We'll see where they land after their loss in Bedlam. And then Michigan State at number 11, picking up a nice win over Penn State. You get into the top 10, and especially the top six or seven, that's where the focus will be tonight. Oregon at number 10, don't really think they can get into the college football playoff at this point, but they'll get the rematch with Utah this week. Ole Miss at number nine, Baylor at number eight. Is there a crazy scenario where they can get into the top four? I don't think so, but uh, we'll see where the committee ranks them tonight. I think they need to be ranked ahead of Ohio State if they want any chance whatsoever. We've got the Buckeyes at number seven. So then you get into the top six. Georgia is going to be number one, no doubt about that, James. But is there a change at number two? We'll see. I mean, I think Michigan at number two makes a lot of sense. I think it's a reward for what they did just this past weekend against Ohio State. And in some ways, it penalizes Alabama for what they have not done recently. They've had a lot of close games against, frankly, 
average or less than average team. So I think that Michigan at number two makes a lot of sense. I sincerely hope that the committee puts them there. Yeah, I mean, I think they blew out Ohio. You know, I'll say blew out. They controlled Ohio State, uh, and Alabama struggled against Auburn. So I think they get the two. Bama falls to three. Doesn't matter at the end of the day. Bama's going to have to beat Georgia, in my opinion, to get in. Otherwise, they need chaos. And then I think Cincinnati gets in there at number four with – uh, I think Oklahoma State jumps Notre Dame. I put them at number five. We'll see uh, where these two teams sit. Uh, if Oklahoma State is number five tonight, they're for sure uh, uh, in the driver's seat, assuming Georgia beats Alabama. I think a win for Oklahoma State in the Big 12 title game would get them into the college football playoff. We're being told by the committee chair, uh, Gary Barda, it's actually not Condoleezza Rice anymore, but, uh, you know, she's been on it in the last decade or so. Uh, we're about to get the rankings in just a few moments. But some other storylines, uh, James, about the rankings and just around college football. How about this coaching carousel? I mean, are you kidding me? This is as crazy as it gets. Yeah, when I get these first two points, I've got a thought on them both. So I'm going to combine them here. Is does the committee tonight forward project and say, you know, we don't want – Maybe the crown jewel of college football, the Notre Dame brand, to be coaching with an interim coach in our playoff. So we're <laughs> going to start penalizing them now and not have to wait until <laughs> Sunday. It could happen, right? It could happen. It certainly uh, is not, wouldn't be surprising. We have seen the committee do things that feel like they're just gut feels all the time yeah. in the past six, seven years. I think that's pretty interesting to see. But if Notre Dame does make it, Wow, what a story that would be. If they were to win you know, their semifinal game, whether it be against Georgia or Michigan Ryan or whatever. Ryan Kelly never did that. I, yeah, I, I think that their, <laughs> whoever the interim is, is, is got the, he's got the lockdown on the job, in my opinion, Which at that point. Which is probably going to be Marcus Freeman. Obviously, championship week can come it up. And then it feels like it's down to five, maybe uh, six teams total for the Final Four, but especially five teams fighting four or three spots. And we kind of already outlined the Heisman Trophy. It's uh, It's been a bizarre race. You look at some resume comparisons here because Georgia – they're clearly number one. No one's going to dispute that. Uh, if they beat Bama, they will be the number one seed. Uh, Michigan, Alabama, Oklahoma State, and Notre Dame. It's interesting when you put these uh, these teams side by side. Uh, and I think you look at this just from a numerical standpoint, and I would throw the eye test in there as well. I think Michigan is worthy of being the number two team in the country tonight, James. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. And they've got a, one of the better wins in the country, a fairly dominating win against Ohio State. I mean, it was close at times, but – if you look at it objectively, Ohio, Michigan had the only turnover of the game, and then Ohio State had four, at least four, miraculous catches from their amazing wide receiver crew that kept them in drive. I could equate 14 of the 28 points were kept alive or completely happened based on catches off a guy's hands or catching catches when you're out of bounds but get a toe down inbound. So I think yep. Michigan uh, dominated that game, and as such, they'll be rewarded with the number Odd, this two. this as well. Real quick, I think you look at this, I think Oklahoma State will jump Notre Dame tonight, uh, in my opinion. Shout out your favorite team. We're just moments away from revealing the second to last college football playoff rankings. We, of course, will get the final rankings this Sunday mor or, uh, afternoon morning, depending on where you're watching from, 12 o'clock noon, uh, Eastern time, 11 o'clock Central. We will be live for that as well. Shout out your fav favorite team. I'll give some shout outs on Maine. And then, of course, uh, a lot of uh, Go Blues and Michigans on uh, the Michigan channel. John's a Gamecocks fan, South Carolina. Go Oklahoma State from Weapon. We got Michigan uh, in here as well. Nittany Nation is a Penn State fan. Go Pokes in the chat. Uh, Texas from Dusty. Being told the rankings are about to be revealed to us, so we're going to start breaking these down right now. Continue to shout out your favorite team. 25 through 21, wow. Bam. Uh, Texas A&M plummets 10 spots after their loss to LSU. They're number 25. Uh, the Raging Cajuns, Louisiana back in there at number 24. Kentucky back in the rankings at number 23. Arkansas is 22nd. And then the Houston Cougars at number 21. They, of course, looking to play spoiler against the Cincinnati Bearcats in the American Athletic Championship game. So that is 21 through 25. Houston 21, Arkansas 22, Kentucky 23, Louisiana 24, Texas A&M 25. Continue to shout out your favorite team. I mean, what do you, you keep Texas A&M right in the top 25 to give Alabama a little more love because they have a better loss than they would. All right, Harrison, I've got Connie in my ear. We have Clemson. <laughs> got Clemson coming in. Why don't you read off the, the next five for us, yeah, Clemson at 20, San Diego State at 19, North Carolina State at 18. I don't know if you watched, by the way. They had a crazy win over North Carolina, late onside kick. Utah at number 17, and then Wake Forest at number 16. So that is 16 through 20 here. 
Keep shouting out your favorite team. You got some Go Blues in the chat over yeah, there? Yeah, I got some Go Blues. While we're waiting for the top 15, I'll give a few shout outs. Um, Chase Jr. says Michigan. Uh, Jonathan Fiscus says Michigan. Uh, Dio DeLuca, Michigan. Also, Aiden should win. Uh, A.O. Doran, Michigan. Alex E. Got a lot of Michigans coming in the Michigan chat. Very few. Ah, Joe Smith says Bama, but uh, oh. no, he says Bama stinks, actually. Never mind. Oh, there you go. 15 <laughs> through 11. Pitt at number 15, so it's 15 versus 16 in the uh, ACC title game. Oklahoma falls to 14 after their loss. Uh, Iowa at number 13, so they get a little bit of a boost. Uh, it'll be a top 15 matchup in the Big Ten championship game. BYU at number 12, and then Michigan State moves up a spot. They are number 11 after their win over Penn State. I'm getting some more shout-outs here. Uh, I'm seeing a couple go blues in the chat. Subscribe to the Michigan Football Report, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. James has you guys covered all season long. San Diego State from Sebastian. Zachary says Central Michigan. Quick super chat here. If you guys super chat, we'll get them on the show. Bubba says, war damn eagle. Well, Bubba, you shouldn't have choked against Alabama because you had it in the bag and you lost it. But we appreciate the five bucks. All Super Chats are very much welcome. Real quick, subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash chat sports TV. The final college football playoff rankings will come out Sunday, 12 o'clock Eastern, 11 o'clock Central Time. Hit that big red button. It's youtube.com slash chat sports TV. And if you're watching on the Michigan Football Report, subscribe over there as well. Yeah, we're starting to get here in the top 10, Harrison. We'll read them off as they come in. Number 10, Oregon, as we wait for number 9. All you folks watching on the Michigan Football Report channel, thank you so much for joining us. We have over 700 live watching on Michigan Football, our biggest audience on this YouTube live ever. Of course, it's only like one of the first ones we've ever done for this. But go ahead and subscribe to the channel, please. We'd really appreciate it. We're putting out videos every single day for this program. Number nine comes in. It is the Baylor Bears at 10-2. and two. They will play in the Big 12 championship game against Oklahoma State this week. So thank you to all the Michigan football fans watching on our channel, 730 watching live. 730 of you, if you ever subscribe, please subscribe to the channel and like this video. How about this? Baylor Falls... That means Ole Miss for beating Mississippi State is going to jump Baylor. Sus. Is this just to, like, Sus. eliminate Suspect. any any theory that Baylor could get in, I guess? I mean, maybe that's the only thought process there. How is beating Mississippi State that much greater than beating Texas Tech? It's, it, it, it's the it's same not. thing. That's, that's, that's a very bizarre one. Uh, mm. Ole Miss coming in at number eight. Okay, I mean, yeah. I, I, what's the point of that? Ole Miss isn't playing in a championship game. I, I, mean, why, I, I mean, I understand Michigan State lost to Ohio State by 200, but, like, what did any of these teams, some of these Ole Miss, Baylor, what is their claim to a top 10 over Michigan State? I don't like Ole Miss moving up that much. I think this is SEC bias. It doesn't Plain help as anyone. Day. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So, 8 through 10, Ole Miss, Baylor, and Oregon. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Yeah, shout out to everyone watching on Michigan. Uh, Eddie Haskell says, Ole Miss is number eight. Why? Totally agree with you. Trey Dempsey says, Georgia, Michigan, Cincinnati, Bama is his top four. We've got number 10, number nine, and number eight as we await on number seven. Assuming, Harrison, it will likely be Ohio State in yep. the uh, – in the grand scheme of things. But while we wait on the top seven folks, go ahead and shout out your favorite team. If you're watching in the Michigan channel, just type Michigan. Let's get the chat going, and we will get this bad boy rolling. Harrison, Connie's my ear, number seven <laughs> in this cultural playoff ranking. The Ohio State Buckeyes drop from two down to seven. Don't think there's a path for them to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, they will and be playing be. in a New Year's Six. No, they should, they should not be in whatsoever. Quick shout outs on shout out your favorite team. Alabama, Oklahoma, seeing Georgia Tech in the chat. Wow, shout out to you. That's a loyal fan right there from Josh. Keep shouting out your favorite team. Before we hear the top six from the College Football Playoff Committee, this is what we believe is the College Football Playoff map as we sit. The top four, Georgia, Alabama, Michigan, Cincinnati. I think it's pretty clear, James, if those teams win, they are into the college football playoff. 100%. And frankly, Georgia, although we put them in the win and the end, they are also they're losing just in, in at, they're at just this in. point, right? <laughs> yeah. They are just in. Uh, I want to remind all the Michigan fans watching, please stick around after the top 25 is revealed. We'll roll through all the rankings again, but we are going to have a Michigan football report only live audience Q&A. So stick with us after this. We'll drop the stream on chat sports and we'll stick with you guys for your live Michigan chats only. So use hashtag Michigan uh, a little bit later, probably about 20 minutes or so away from it. So if uh, you forget, if you leave, come back to us here. I would say what about 730, 745 Eastern. We'll, we'll be getting to the Michigan maybe a few minutes after that. 
So we'll be doing a Michigan Football Live Q&A. As many questions you want to ask, uh, I will answer. Harrison will pop off, and we'll do a Michigan-only show to re react to these rankings and preview the Michigan-Iowa game coming up Saturday night in Indianapolis. Michigan 11-point favorites over Iowa. So that is the word there. We're waiting for the top six, Harrison. What do you think it's going to be? Well, I think Georgia's going to be one, and we'll explore that in a second. I want to remind you guys to subscribe, though, because – you guys have been loving our college football content over the last couple of weeks. We've been doing coaching hot boards for a bunch of different teams. Lincoln Riley replacements is closing in on 100,000 views. You guys are awesome. Go check it out if you haven't already. 12 potential candidates uh, to replace him at Oklahoma. Brian Kelly replacements now at Notre Dame. James Yoder turned around the car last night as he was leaving to come in and film this one. It's, I don't think college football has ever been more hot and more on fire from you guys as fans. I think a lot of it has to do with last year being kind of down at the dumps. It's back, coaching carousel. We're covering it all, so make sure you subscribe. And, of course, we will be live for the final college football playoff ranking. So this is the channel to subscribe to for this time of year for college football news and rumors. A couple of super chats to hit real quick. Still waiting for the committee to uh, get us their rankings. The Volunteers, thank you, Corey, will be a legitimate threat next season. Watch out for the Vols. I do like what Hendon Hooker has done this year, and I think Josh Heupel might work out a little better than we thought initially. Yeah, I mean, Hendon Hooker, looking around next year, I mean, he's coming back as – Sneaky Heisman uh, candidate? quarterback that's got a lot of uh, a lot of great play behind him. He could be one of these guys that surprised you. He reminds me kind of what North Carolina's quarterback was coming in this year. You're expecting him to take that next big step. Uh, hot piss. <laughs> Congrats, Michigan great fans. Name. You get to brag on Facebook instead of MySpace and Yahoo. That's a good joke. Shut the last up, time Michigan piss. won, it was MySpace. Kiss my butt. That's a good one. Hey, we'll take the five bucks. We appreciate it. We're getting the top six as we speak here. Georgia is the number one team in the country. No surprises there. They come in at number one. They're undefeated. Uh, I think they're, you know, they could sit their starters and still make the playoffs. The Michigan Wolverines, they Woo! jump from five to two after their win over Ohio State. Your instant reaction, James. Number two, just like Charles Woodson, baby. I love it. <laughs> Michigan beat number two. That you want to be number two, you got to beat number two, and that's what Michigan did. They hold serve against Iowa, and gosh, you know what? I'm only hoping for this at this point, Harrison. Is is there a chance that even if Alabama loses or beats Georgia, that somehow Michigan could pop to number one and I don't know avoid playing one of those SEC teams in the CFP? I think if Georgia loses and Michigan wins, Michigan would be the number one overall seed. But we'll see what happens. Alabama is at number three, so uh, this was our projected top three as well. Georgia one, Michigan two. Alabama, number three in the college football playoff rankings. We assume Cincinnati will stay at four, but uh, we will have to wait and see what happens. So we haven't heard officially yet, but uh, Michigan-Bama was a big talking point, James, and they get to jump Bama. It doesn't really matter in the end, mm -hmm. but uh, it's got to feel good as a Michigan fan. Yeah, it feels good to be number two, Harrison. And, like, look, sh I don't want to say shout out. It seems, like, so corny, but – Jim Harbaugh was left for dead, right? Jim Harbaugh was yeah, left was. for dead just 10, 11 months ago. And I was one of the people uh, shouting from the rooftops louder than anybody across the internet that he wasn't, that he had lost his touch, that he had uh, kind of mailed it in. He wasn't coaching Michigan like we expected. He wasn't coaching Michigan like he needed to. But he made the change he needed to. He approached this season as, look, there's nothing left for me to get taken down. There's no more losses to Ohio State that I can be embarrassed about. Why don't we shake it up? Why don't we go back to the offense I want to run? How about we completely revamp our recruiting department? How about we you know, change out seven coaches this offseason? And it's turned into the best season Michigan's seen this century. And I'm excited to see where they go, Harrison. You know, I think Michigan's one upset away from a national championship. Who the hell would have thought of that 10 months ago? Uh, not me, that's for sure. Who would have thought Cincinnati would be in the driver's seat to make the college football playoff? I think it's simple. Cincinnati beats Houston. They are in the college football playoff. Uh, Oklahoma State jumps Notre Dame. Yep. So, James, that tells me if they win the Big 12 championship game and Georgia handles Alabama, I think Oklahoma State would get into the college football playoff. I think Notre Dame needs a lot of help if they want to sneak into the top four. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to shout out. We'll get you on screen here at some point. I'm not sure if it'll be a little later, but Spawn, I think it's the first super chat in Michigan football for history. Send in 10 bucks. Uh, Spawn with a go blue. So 
Thank you so much to that. Anybody wants a super chat? Uh, look, we haven't done live shows before in Michigan, at least in this type of thing. We've done some on Facebook Live way back in the day, 2017 season. Uh, but once YouTube became the platform, haven't done a ton of them. So we're trying it out. I think it's the right time for Michigan. But there is your top six, Georgia, Michigan, Alabama, Cincinnati, Oklahoma State, and Notre Dame. But Harrison, here's the question we went to just a little bit ago. Who should be ranked higher, Notre Dame Go ahead and type one here in the live chat, both on Chat Sports and the Michigan Football Report live YouTube chat or Oklahoma State. Type two. Clearly, Oklahoma State's the team, so two. But I, I mean, look, I think it should be Notre Dame just because I just think the sport's better if Notre Dame is in the playoff versus <laughs> Oklahoma State. What We've do you have seen to say? Notre Dame I'm get a blown traditionalist. Out the playoff. I, and hey, I'm hoping they pop to number three and Michigan gets to play them and beat their uh, Irish asses the, one last time. The only reason I would kind of like them in is because they would be in without a coach. Like, that would be entertaining to see how they would handle that. But I, Oklahoma State should be ranked higher, and they are ranked higher. I think that was the right move by the College Football Playoff Committee. It's pretty split in the chat, so continue to get your votes in. We got a super chat, James. This is the one from the Michigan Football Yes, Report. coming in from our Michigan Football Report YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Spawn, $10 oh man. Thank you so much. Spawn just says, go blue. Um, I've been saying go blue in my mind, Harrison. I'll tell you what. I said on the show uh, – uh, marriage, child, hiring Jeremy, and uh, and Saturday, <laughs> uh, best four days of my life. But, but I'll say this: I don't know if any of those feelings. They, it's lasted 72 hours, about 80 hours now. I'm still on cloud nine from that win. So spawn. Hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Brandon Trejo, uh, why don't you read that, Harrison? It's too far uh, away from Ole me. Miss uh, <laughs> resume boost for Bama to get in with two losses. Hey, yeah, I people agree. are talking. <laughs> if uh, Bama plays Georgia very close, maybe they're like, well, Ole Miss is in the top eight. We're just going to keep them in there. Uh, I think it's simple. I think if Bama loses to Georgia, they should be out. I think they probably will be out. Funny Michigan-related question before we go to the next Super Chat. Uh, Matt Griffin says, in without a coach like Steve Fisher, uh, only Michigan fans so understand that. Only national title in Michigan basketball history they entered the tournament with an interim coach they fired their head coach two days before the tournament started Harrison won the national That's title amazing. with an interim coach because he had interviewed and reportedly accepted the job after the tournament with Arizona State that was Bill Frieder so shout out to that question next super chat here from Alex E go blue hail to the victors be Iowa and then the M emoji thanks so much Alex that is awesome I'm hoping you're enjoying the victory these last three days have been so awesome as Michigan fans. Everyone's enjoying it. No matter what happens at the end of the year, there's nothing you can take away from us. David on our main Chat Sports YouTube channel says, Go Bearcats. Hey, you win and you're in. I think it's as simple as that. Cincinnati wins the American Conf or Athletic Conference Championship game. They will make the college football playoff. Now, we are going to break down what we just witnessed, the top 25, especially the top six, when it comes to the college football playoff ranking so stay tuned James and I are ready to get into it right now college football now Harrison Graham and James Yoder here the second to last college football playoff rankings have just come out we'll bring them to you and we will react to them as well James two main questions on the night once we entered uh, this week's rankings who would be two Michigan or Bama who would be five Oklahoma State or Notre Dame Michigan gets the nod at number two. Oklahoma State gets the nod at number five. Yeah, and Oklahoma State, now I feel like they are rooting for Alabama to win that game. I'm sorry, for Georgia to win that oh, game definitely Georgia. over Alabama. Yeah. And then you would have potentially, if Michigan and Cincinnati hold serve, it's Georgia versus Oklahoma State, Michigan versus Cincinnati. That could be your college football playoff semifinals if everything else, you know, if nothing crazy happens there. There it is. And Harrison, you and I will be here 12 o'clock Eastern Sunday. Remember, this is the last Tuesday show. The games all happen on Friday and Saturday, the conference championship games. Sunday, noon Eastern, we will be live on both these channels as long as Michigan beats Iowa, of course. If they lose, I don't know if I'm going to even be here if they lose, honestly, Harrison. You <laughs> might be doing this show me. solo. It might be you and Jack and Brett. Whatever. Uh, 12 <laughs> o'clock Eastern on Sunday. We'll do the uh, college football playoff top four. A uh, little later, we'll do all of the college football New Year's Six Bowl games. And then later in the day, we will bring you every single bowl matchup from the uh, college 2021 college football uh, bowl slate. So it's going to be an exciting Sunday for us here at College Football Now by Chat Sports. Yeah, so make sure you subscribe. Don't miss any of our college football coverage. Uh, we'll sprint through the rest of the rankings. Uh, they don't really matter at this point. Ohio State at number seven. Uh, Ole Miss, for some reason, jumped Baylor <laughs> to get up to number eight. Baylor playing for a Big 12 title. They're number nine. Oregon at number 10. We'll break down 11 through 25 shortly, but... 
you look at the map here, James, as long as Georgia beats Alabama, you can pretty much slide Oklahoma State into that win and get in category. The question would be, if Bama beats Georgia, is it just the four teams on the left if the other teams hold serve? I, I think that would probably be it. Maybe Bama would jump up to number one, and then Georgia falls to two or three, and that way they can avoid the first round me rematch. Yeah, they're going to avoid the rematch as much as they can because what's going to we're already facing this thing with this season. Um, I think you and I, and maybe a lot of people watching, would say this is a college football season that is finally exciting because you just don't have the same three or four yep. teams in names. for six, seven seasons. But – if it turns out to be Cincinnati and Oklahoma State, you might run into a ratings problem. So I do know that they would definitely want to avoid a Georgia-Alabama rematch in the semifinal because people would be like, oh, I already saw that game happen. That's stupid. I don't want to see that. So I think no matter what happens, the committee will avoid if Alabama beats Georgia, making them one versus four, two versus three, so they have to play in the semifinal. They would slate it so those teams would, if they both won the semis, would face again in the national championship game. Now, Oklahoma State got the nod in the, fi or in the second to last college football playoff rankings, but who should be ranked higher? I believe the committee got it right with Oklahoma State, but maybe you disagree. Type one for Notre Dame, type two for Oklahoma State. Go ahead and let us know what you guys think on this one uh, with Oklahoma State being ranked higher. I think if they win, there's no way Notre Dame can re-jump them. Now, today's show is sponsored by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. If you want to go bet on Championship Saturday, there's only one place to do it. That is BetUS. you got to use our link, though, to take advantage of the awesome promo deal, which gets you 125% deposit bonus. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use our promo code CHAT125, put down 100 bucks, get 125 for free. You can also bet on the Wild Heisman Trophy uh, scenario because who the hell is going to win this thing? Bryce Young's the favorite. I don't know who the best value is because I don't think Bryce Young's going to beat Georgia, but if you're feeling confident, DJ Stroud plus 400 odds, put down four bucks to win 40. Maybe that's a decent play. Kenny Picky put 10 bucks down to win 140. That's how the betting works based on those odds. Chatsports.com slash bet. Use that promo code CHAT125. James, real quick, let's sprint through 11 through 25, and then we will uh, go ahead and uh, talk more about the top six. One note on that, uh, BetUS is ensuring the Aiden Hutchinson is not that high because they don't want me to bet it because they know mm. I'm going to win. That's, yeah. that's the rules there. Michigan State, BYU, <laughs> Iowa, who will face Michigan in the Big Ten Championship game. Oklahoma without a coach, and then number 15, Pitt, to round out the top 15. Let's take it to 16 through 20. Wake Forest, Utah, who will face Oregon in the Pac-12 title game. NC State, San Diego State, shout out Brady Hoke, and Clemson. Wow, what a turnaround for them. I mean, look, you take a lot of shots at Dabo. You take a lot of shots at their Still offense. Won nine the games. Year, but now they are at 20 in the uh, the year, and, and they're shaping up to, to potentially be a top-10 team again going into next season if they get that offense turned around. 21 is the Houston Cougars. They're playing Cincinnati, right? This is the uh, the conference championship game there, so upsets are possible. It could happen. Yep. Arkansas, 22. Kentucky, 23. Louisiana Lafayette at 24. And then Texas A&M at 25. They're just taking any SEC team that just didn't put them uh, in there. get blown out in the last two weeks and just shoving them in the top 25. It seems yeah, what is happening. That's how it goes. Grade the rankings. I don't really care about 11 through 25 this late. I actually think they got the top six right. That is exactly how I ranked them. That's exactly how I would have ranked them. So I think uh, the, the teams that matter, the teams that are in the hunt, I think they got it right. So I would actually give this an A grade. How would you grade it, James? Look, Michigan's number two. I can only say it's an A-plus grade. They got it right. They ranked <laughs> Michigan over Alabama. And not even trying to be a homer. I think no, that was the you correct get move. a big win, yeah. and we've seen it before with – Plenty of teams. If you, that's why we say if Alabama were to beat Georgia, they would of course be in, but they would pop to number one because they beat number one and they would have one loss. Yep. Michigan would have one loss. Georgia would have one loss. Of course, Cincinnati would be undefeated, but I don't think Cincinnati is going to jump to number one. So um, it's all really going to come down to the SEC title game is the most intriguing one in my opinion because it's got two teams, right? It's not even my opinion. It's a fact, right? That is a fact. Uh, no, yeah. uh, two teams that will likely, you know, the winner will be in the SEC title game and. If George is the loser, the loser will be, I'm sorry, in the college football playoff. So I'm really excited to see that one. Uh, that one's kind of your mid-afternoon matinee leading up to the Big Ten championship game between Michigan and Iowa on Saturday night. Let's take a look at these resumes, Harrison. Take us through Michigan, Alabama, Oklahoma State, and Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, because you look at Michigan, Bama, the, that was kind of the debate. Who would be two? Who would be three? And then on the right side, who would be five? Who would be six? Uh, I, I think I think Michigan's metrics and 
the way they looked when they beat Ohio State would tell you that they were more worthy of jumping up. That's why they jump up. That's why Bama slips back. Bama still has a good resume. But, you know, you watch Bama this year. They're very beatable. I mean, a bad Auburn team should have beaten them. A, f a bad Florida team almost beat them earlier in the year. This is still a good Bama team. This is not, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, dropping 50 points a game with Mac Jones last year and winning the national title by four touchdowns. That's that's not this team. There's no doubt about that. The one sort of thing I struggle with when it comes to the Heisman is if you say C.J. Stroud, if you say Bryce Young, are they the worst quarterback either of those schools has had in the past six or seven years? I would say yes <sighs> without a question, right? And if one of those guys wins the Heisman – that feels wrong to me. I, neither one of those players has come in and made their program better. If you could say anything that's made their program a little bit worse, it's not maybe that they're at their fault. But Tua, he didn't win the Heisman. Justin Fields didn't win the Heisman. And those guys were remarkably better than the two quarterbacks, at least in, you know, in a season versus what those guys were this year. So I would, if Bryce Young beats Georgia, he wins it. I'll be fine with that. If he loses, though, this is one of the wilder Heisman races we've ever seen in our entire life. Reminds me of the year it. where like Jordan Lynch got invited. Remember they invited like eight can uh, finalists because they didn't know who the hell was going to win. I don't even know who <laughs> won it. They, the Navy kid got invited. I don't yeah. even uh, remember who won it it's that not the year. Like Jabril Peppers got invited. It was the <laughs> second. Yeah, it was the second Johnny Manziel year. The year after right, he won so it. We also got the Big Ten championship game. I, I, I think it's simple. You win if you're Michigan. You lose. You're probably out. I mean, you can't lose to Iowa if you're the Michigan Wolverines. I will say it would have been nice had they beaten Michigan State. They wouldn't have to worry about it as much. Yeah, they might be Michigan had they beat Michigan State. It could be either way you're in, win or lose. But Michigan is an 11-point favorite. I've said this on uh, Michigan Football Report. It is inconceivable. If Michigan were to lose this game, it doesn't take anything away from beat them beating Ohio State. But I think the Michigan football fan base would literally just be – they would it would be in shambles, the, the amount of shambles you can't even imagine. Yeah. Iowa's offense is just putrid. There's yes. no doubt. AAC championship. I actually think this one – I think Cincinnati will win, but Houston's won 11 games in a row. I mean, they have not lost since their first game against Texas Tech. They've been rolling offensively. Cincinnati's played better the last few weeks, James, but at times they've kind of messed around and not looked great. So I think this one is more chance of an upset alert than the Big Ten title game. So we'll have to wait and see how that one shakes out. That one will be uh, going at the same time as the SEC title game. So not a lot of eyeballs on this one. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, how that one shakes out. Plus, keep an eye, Luke Fickle, Notre Dame rumors, they're going to be circulating. And then the Big 12 championship game, I feel good about where Oklahoma State sits, but Baylor's been a good team all year, and Oklahoma State already beat Baylor. Hard to beat a team twice in the same season. Mm -hmm. so yeah, we'll I mean, look, I uh, I have a great read on this game, Harrison, Baylor, Oklahoma State. These are two teams that, like, frankly, I just – I have this tendency to write off teams once they lose a game. I'm like, that team is <laughs> terrible. They're not going to make it at the end of the year. And if they don't come across my path and then a Big Ten team, et cetera. So I don't have a great read on this game. I didn't think Oklahoma State would beat Oklahoma. They did. And Baylor, I'm just like, okay, it's Baylor. What are you going to do well, there? So what happens here? Oklahoma State, though, wins. They're just an Alabama loss away from being the CFP. Who would have predicted yeah. Oklahoma State or Michigan in the CFP just three, four months What's ago? What's crazy about this matchup is, couple years ago that would just be a spread out first team to 50 points wins they're mm. actually both like physical defensive teams now it's mm. it's very very bizarre most likely to lose this week type a for alabama they face georgia type m for michigan they face iowa type c for cincinnati they go up against houston type o for oklahoma state they go up against baylor who is the most likely team to lose this week let us know and just to recap this is the top six in the second to last college football playoff rankings the rankings heading into uh championship weekend here in college football georgia's number one michigan's number two alabama's number three Cincinnati four, Oklahoma State five, and Notre Dame sitting there at number six. Shout out your favorite team. We'll get some shout outs going here. Let us know where you guys are watching from. I believe once uh, we get the green light from our producers, uh, James is going to do a little Michigan live Q&A. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned with us. Don't go anywhere. Uh, a lot more to get to, at least on the Michigan football report. But shout out your favorite team. And I'll get some shout outs here. Uh, Daniel says, go Gators. Uh, Arkansas from Karina. We've got Gimme Dat says, Sparty. Michigan Blue from off the top. Subscribe to the Michigan football report. YouTube.com slash Michigan TV. Josh says, Iowa. Lorenzo uh, says, just how I predicted it. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the top six was pretty easy to figure out this week. 
Chris says Ohio State. Uh, I'm seeing a Florida State in there from Pablo. Uh, Oklahoma State from Isaac. Kevin says Michigan. Lorenzo, Florida State. Go Washington State Cougars on that front. I'll continue to get some shout-outs here. Uh, we can go solo on me if James needs to figure uh, a couple of things out real quick. No, I'm good from that perspective. Oh, you good? You got to figure yeah, it out? Yeah, we'll okay. roll with Michigan here in a second, uh, Harrison. We'll, uh, if you're watching the Michigan Football Report stream, I am going to break off from the main chat sports broadcast and do a Michigan football-only question and answer. We'll do it live here on YouTube, and then we'll actually take these Q&As. We'll post them. I'll post one tomorrow. So if, you, uh, you know, if you're watching, you want to rewatch it, cool, or anybody uh, who, you know, want to send to a friend, whatever, say, hey, this guy Yoder, he's got some good content. Subscribe to the channel. We will put one up on Wednesday morning. So let's keep it rolling. So use hashtag Michigan. What that does is it allows the producer to uh, find the questions a little bit easier. So go ahead and use hashtag Michigan uh, or Super Chat, right? If you're doing some cash, uh, we're raising money right now for what's called the Preston Fund. It's my son. Uh, it's basically just raising money so I can pay to get him better things. So if you want to Super Chat, go ahead and do that. So either use hashtag it, Michigan or It also the pays for random Vegas trips. Also pays for, pays for random <laughs> Vegas trips. That's what it also as well. as well. So use hashtag Michigan. We are going to get a bunch of uh, Michigan football questions going here and do a live audience Q&A here in a moment. Some more shout-outs for your favorite team. Go Blue from Andrew. Kenny Pickett for Heisman from Steel City. Uh, we got Bailey Zapp for Heisman. That's a weird one. Go Big Orange from Jacob. Uh, let's see. Uh, Milan says Arkansas. Hutch for Heisman from uh, Eli Ruth. Kaiser says, says Go Blue as well. Let's see. Uh, one sec. Iowa beats Blueberries. Uh, I don't know what that means. Cincinnati from Austin. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to... Get out of the way. James is going to stay live here on the Michigan Football Report. So get those questions in. Hashtag Michigan. Super chat. Load those up. I'm going to sign off uh, for the night. I will be back on Sunday for the final college football playoff rankings with James Joder. Unless Michigan loses, then he you know, might be too hungover and in shambles to come in. But I'm signing off. James is going to do a live Q&A on the Michigan Football Report. I will see you guys Sunday. So long. Welcome to the Michigan Football Report. Live question and answer following the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Michigan is ranked number two, folks. So, you know, didn't have to tell anybody this. You all know this. You beat Iowa coming up on Saturday, and Michigan will be in the college football playoff. I'm going to take your questions live on air. If you're watching this later in the week, of course, we took these questions live on Tuesday, immediately following our college football playoff top 25 rankings rankings reveal i got a question first one coming here from the live chat megadone speed do you think our wide receivers are gonna uh harrison when you walk out the door tilt this tv towards me i really can't read that far screen so i apologize for that uh, do you think our wide receiver groups are going to go off pretty soon we've been getting better each week look i saw some really nice catches this past week mike sainristall cornelius johnson they had some pretty epic games and look that play call to A.J. Henning was one of the most diabolical, maybe remarkable play calls we've seen of Michigan football under Jim Harbaugh. If you didn't see what happened in the press conferences and Harbaugh and others have talked about it, they said that all the catches, the 10 catches for 170 yards that Diamond Edwards had against Maryland the week prior to the game, a lot of that was all set up for that touchdown play. Go back and watch Michigan's first touchdown. They take Diamond Edwards out of the backfield. And Cade McNamara actually pumped fake to him. And Saint, um, Josh Jackson was in the slot on the same side of the field. He came from the left side to the right side. And McNamara's handed it off to him like that. Barely could see it. That play call was two weeks in the making. So big time play call from Jim Harbaugh, Josh Gaddis. And I think the Michigan receivers are getting better and better. Getting better uh, with Cade McNamara. And Cade is doing exactly what needs to get done to win the game. But if you're going to beat Georgia, you might have to play a little better. Make a few more throws that we haven't seen from him this season super chat coming in from m nelly 25 he says go blue we want georgia i do want georgia in the championship game but you know if they lose in the semifinals i'm not going to argue about that at all i think michigan for the first time in the college football playoff history uh, a big 10 team or a team from the north will have the home field advantage michigan's going to play in indianapolis in all likelihood they'll end up in dallas the two semifinals are in dallas 
and Miami. I'm guessing the SEC champ will be number one. They will choose to go to Miami. Dallas will be the uh, number two versus number three, and Michigan will have that game. And then the national title game, folks, Michigan beats Cincinnati or Oklahoma State or Notre Dame, two versus three. National title game in Indianapolis. Book your tickets now. No matter what, I'm going to New Orleans on Thursday uh, for the Cowboys-Saints game. Coming back Saturday morning, paying an absurd amount to fly back to do a post-game show. But if Michigan wins that game, of course, I'll be at both the semifinal and the national title game. Alex E. coming in with a question. How do you think we fare against the rest of the top six, Bama, Georgia, Cincinnati, Oklahoma State, and Notre Dame? Um, from a bookmaking, bookmaking perspective, Michigan will be favored against every team on that list in the semifinal or the championship game except for Georgia. If Michigan and Georgia, play, Georgia played, Georgia would be about the same favorite as Ohio State would be. It fluctuates between 7 to 8 to 8.5 points, which I think is fair based on what we've seen. Remember about Georgia. They are giving up a touchdown per game this season. They have played 12 games, folks, and they have not even given up 100 points scored against them this entire year. If Michigan is going to win that game, they need to do what they did against Ohio State. Come up with a game plan that you are going to tell your great grandchildren around if you have the lucky, you know, you're lucky enough to uh, to talk with them about Michigan football. So I like what I see this year in college football. You don't have the heavyweights at the top: Alabama, Clemson, Oklahoma, Ohio State, like you've had in the past. And as such, it's anybody's championship. Don't tell me Georgia's too good for Michigan to beat them. I just won't believe you. To all you who are watching live right now, if you've never watched our show before, make sure to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. We're putting out more Michigan football content than anyone on planet Earth. And we are now the biggest YouTube channel for Michigan football, past Michigan podcast, just in the last couple of days. 16,900 subscribers. If you're watching on demand, appreciate you. If you've already subscribed, if you have it, now's the time. Michigan's in the Big Ten Championship game, National Championship game, College World Playoff, all that stuff coming up. We have a video for you if Michigan wins against Iowa every single day in the month of December, and ideally all the way up to the National Championship game in, in, in Indianapolis uh, the second Monday of, uh, of January, which will be super exciting. So hit that sub button. Brendan, coming in, do you think Michigan can get focused enough to beat Iowa coming off such a huge win? Look, the great thing about this Michigan football team right now, the thing I've seen about Jim Harbaugh that is tremendous this season is that they haven't looked ahead too far, and they have come to play every single game. The one thing looking back, I went to the 2018 game against Ohio State in Columbus, and I was in the stadium about an hour and a half before kickoff, and I said to my friend I went with who was an Ohio State fan, I said, I don't know. I don't I don't like this game at all. This doesn't feel right. Because Ohio State came out. They were getting crazy. They were getting after it. They looked crisp. Ohio State, Michigan looked like they were, you know, scared. The opposite of what happened on Saturday against Ohio State this year. Michigan looked like the aggressor. They looked like the confident team. I think that's going to continue uh, going on. We've seen it all year. Wisconsin, Washington, Nebraska. Penn State, even the Michigan State game, I thought they came out and played with confidence. Ultimately, they just didn't get it done down the stretch. Josh Fade underscore Master says, did we have Mike Hart this year, or did having Mike Hart this year help our running game? Without question. There is no doubt about it. Michigan went from one of the worst rushing teams from both strategy, play calling, rotation, right, trying to rotate four and five backs in some games last year, and productivity Worst, one of the worst in the country, maybe the worst in Power 5, honestly, last year from a rushing attack, to maybe the best in under a year. It's a worst to first turnaround like we haven't seen. Mike Hart's already getting some buzz about being the offensive coordinator at Indiana, right, where he just left. They fired their offensive coordinator. He's also getting some buzz for the head coaching job at Temple. So if Michigan needs to give him a raise, do it. If they need to give him an elevated title like, I don't know, running game coordinator, just do it. He wants to be the head coach of this program. Jim Harbaugh needs to say, Mike, stick with me. Ride my coattails. You will get your dreams. You'll be the head coach of the Michigan football program someday. Is Aiden Hutchinson a realistic contender for the Heisman? I think he is, actually. I really uh, think that he is um, this week. If we go to this Big Ten championship game, if he gets two or three sacks, or if what you saw I put on my show and I put on Twitter in the last day or so, get him a touchdown. Put him in there at fullback if you can, right? If Michigan's covering the game, if they're winning by 14 or 17 or 21 points in the fourth quarter, go ahead and give him a carry inside the five-yard line. And I think it'd be pretty exciting. Jack, if you get a chance, toss up my Twitter account. I want to make sure everyone watching here live gives the opportunity to do so, and we'll get there. 
Next question up, coming from Tharper with two R's as Haskins actually an NFL caliber back. He's not a first-round pick. I've talked to enough NFL scouts or people around that, that do mock drafts, etc. No one's predicting him to be a first-round pick. But surprisingly, he has two years of eligibility left, right? Because last year didn't count against eligibility because of coronavirus, he has two years of eligibility left. But I think Hassan Haskins, it's pretty clear from every indication that he has given those around him and to Jim Harbaugh, the program, he will enter the NFL draft. I'm guessing he's going to be about a third or fourth round pick because he doesn't have top end speed. But what he's proven, he's taken his draft stock from an undrafted seventh round, sixth round guy to a third round pick, most likely. He will leave the you know, Michigan after the season, most likely. Let's hope he does it as either a first team All American, a Heisman Trophy winner, and hell, how about a national champion? Let's get some score predictions here in the comments on the Michigan Football Report. Iowa, Michigan, Saturday night, 8 p.m. Eastern from Indianapolis. It's the Big Ten Championship game. The first time Michigan has been in this Big Ten Championship game since it was started in the 2011 season. Go ahead and give me those comments. I've got Tess M coming in with a 42-27. Same score as they beat Ohio State. I don't think Iowa's going to score 27 points on Michigan. That is for sure. It's one of the worst offenses I've ever seen out of a competent football team in my lifetime. They are a 10-2 team with a 2-10 offense. I've got Jordan Kane, 38-17 Michigan, 27-17 Iowa from Joe, or 27-17 Michigan from Joe Smith, uh, 27-6 from wide open 2006. Uh, Stuber for Heisman, shout out to him. He's had a big time year. Rich Schultz, 35-17, Travis Mitchell, 27-13, and Kevin Hudson. Travis Mitchell, shout out to you, man. I haven't seen you in a while. Welcome back to the show. Kevin Hudson says 35 to 14. Stephen Cannon says, is Michigan going to go after any of the Notre Dame commits? Yeah, there's actually quite a few. There's a receiver from uh, Louisiana that looks like could potentially flip towards Michigan. A couple players that are uh, are in, 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 in I guess, uh, the round. Now, I think if these players are smart, they will stick around with Notre Dame or at least say, hey, we're going to leave, leave it open. There's two weeks from tomorrow till the early National Sign Day, but it's not a required National Sign Day. So I think Michigan will go after plenty of guys. We'll see what happens with the Notre Dame coaching situation. If they get a Luke Fickle or a Matt Campbell or someone of that uh, ilk, potentially Notre Dame could keep this class together. But we'll see what, what they do. If they can move fast, they'll keep the recruiting class together with a big coaching hire. If not... All those recruits, pretty good recruiting class, are on the table for Michigan, Ohio State, Penn State, anybody in the Midwest, or nationally and beyond. Next question coming in from Dre B. Is is Edwards or Corum a 2022 Heisman contender? I mean, why not, right? Blake Corum was certainly a Heisman contender um, going, you know, three, four, five, six games into the year. And now Hassan Haskins um, is one of those uh, Heisman contenders. As I'm looking at the live chat, um, I think that next year it's going to be Corum because he is going to be the guy who gets the carries out of the backfield most in the game, right? This year was split between Haskins, Corum, 15 carries, 18 carries, 16 carries. And then once you got later in the season, Corum gets hurt. Hassan Haskins takes over and gets all of the uh, the carries. And now he has emerged as first team All-American. Tomorrow he'll be named first team All-Big Ten and maybe Maybe he gets the Big Ten Player of the Year over C.J. Stroud. So next year, I think Blake Corum will be the guy from a running perspective. At, you know, Diamond Edwards clearly will as well. But he has proved himself to be a hell of a, uh, a pass catcher. So we'll see what happens next year. Hassan Haskins, though, likely gone from this team. Question coming in from Rich Schultz. I want to continue to uh, ask you guys to keep uh, things rolling, keep the chats going. We're going to put this first part we just did on, uh, on our uh, you know, YouTube channel as an on-demand, and then we'll come and come back, keep rolling with more questions. So keep the questions going. Rick Schultz, how often do we go uh, to the air on Saturday? I believe Iowa will be stacking the box. This Iowa defense is a hell of a defense, folks. It's a really, really good defense, and it's going to challenge Michigan in ways they were challenged, like at Penn State, let's say. Uh, I think it's a better defense than Ohio State, although not as talented. I think it's a better scheme and a better fit against what Michigan does. It's a really good run defense, so Michigan will go to the air. I think the approach will be up there with Michigan State, where Michigan might end up going to the air a little more early on, try and get a couple scores in, but if Josh Gass and Jim Harbaugh can keep up the play calling excellence, and it was an excellent play calling game, you go back and watch it, you're just like, where have these plays been for this program? Um, I think Michigan should do whatever they want against Iowa, all in. They score 35 points. 
Iowa scores anywhere from 7 to 20, 21, and Michigan wins comfortably by a two-score lead. Folks, make sure you follow me on Twitter if you have never watched the show before. It's at James Yoder. I think I'm a pretty funny guy on Twitter, all things being considered. I like to take a lot of shots at Ohio State, and I put out Michigan football news and rumors. So get going with me on Twitter. Uh, I'll make you guys this deal. Anybody who follows me back before end of day Wednesday, so during the live show, or I'll put this video out on demand on Wednesday morning. Anyone who follows me on Twitter before end of day Wednesday, uh, I will follow you back. So hit me up at James Yoder on Twitter. It's our second Michigan football mailbag following the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Probably going to put this video on demand on Friday. So if you're watching this on Friday, we recorded this here on Tuesday uh, coming up on the show. But continue to use your questions. Use hashtag Michigan here on the Michigan football report post college football playoff top 25 rankings reveal. I am taking all of your questions here for the next 12 to 15 minutes. Use hashtag Michigan to get your questions here on the show. You're watching the Michigan Football Report question and answer session following Michigan's win over Ohio State on Saturday, following Michigan being ranked number two in the college football playoff top 25 rankings that came out live on the Michigan Football Report YouTube channel on Tuesday night. I hope you guys watched it. Hope you enjoyed the entire show. I hope you subscribe to the channel. These are questions. Coming to you live from that show. I'm going to put this on demand on Friday morning because I will be out of town. First question coming from Zaire Ugalde. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Hashtag Michigan. Hutchinson for Heisman. A lot of sportsbook have him as the number three Heisman candidate right now. Had he got that touchdown versus Michigan State, I believe he would be the number two Heisman candidate over C.J. Stroud. But really only two things need to happen right now for Aiden Hutchinson to win the Heisman. Maybe two and a half, right? Georgia has to dominate Alabama and make Bryce Young look like a bad quarterback because Bryce Young, Alabama's quarterback, is the number one Heisman candidate right now. So that's one. Number two, he's got to replicate the stats and the impact and the national buzz that he had against Ohio State again one more time. And I'm talking three sacks, a forced fumble, a turnover, something like that. And if you want to do this, one of these ways, let's put a little cherry on top, a little cherry on top there for Aiden Hutchinson. Hey, Jim. This is the time. You got up three touchdowns in the fourth quarter. Get the ball inside the five-yard line. Uh, go into the side of the two-yard line. Give Aiden a carry. Get him a touchdown. Make up for the one they took away. They stole from him against Michigan State. And they've got a Heisman. Potentially, if Georgia lose, wins, if they dominate Alabama, 4 o'clock Eastern, Michigan will enter that, game, enter that game knowing, hey, if one of our guys puts on a show here, Hassan Haskins, Aiden Hutchinson, we have the Heisman Trophy locked up for the first time since 1997. Tree the rail. I'm not sure what that means. Jack, what does that mean? Try the rail? But I guess yeah, try. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's more try. I don't know why I said tree. Um, who's better, Bama or Michigan? I think right now uh, Michigan's absolutely better. I watched the Alabama second half from uh, Southwest Airlines flights, Dallas to Vegas, where I party my face off after the game on Saturday. And I was wildly, wildly unimpressed with Alabama on offense. Their defense look okay. Special teams, whatever. I don't think Bryce Young is a Heisman Trophy level quarterback. He's getting the, if his name was, whatever, I guess his name doesn't matter. But if he was the quarterback for Pitt, if he was the quarterback for, I don't know, another school, uh, Mississippi State, and they were 10-2, and 11-1, he would not be getting Heisman Trophy candidate uh, numbers with, with the stats he's put up. Now, he had a big game two weeks ago. He threw for like 500 yards, five touchdowns, whatever. But three points with two minutes left in the game, that's not Heisman worthy to me. Trevor with the question, how do you feel about Domani Jackson? Well, this is coming out Friday. So I could, I'm going to put this on YouTube on Friday as the on-demand. We're filming this live Tuesday night on our college football playoff post-game show. Domani Jackson has a countdown on his Twitter account for something that's going on about an hour and a half from now, late Tuesday night. Maybe he announces his commitment. Could it be USC? They're on a hot streak. They got Lincoln Riley, right? Anno hired him Sunday, announced him Monday. They got a big-time 2023 Five-star quarterback to flip from Oklahoma to USC tonight. Could they bring back in some of those big-time recruits that they've lost? They had two five-star decommits uh, in the past few weeks, uh, the past maybe month or two. One of them, Domani Jackson. Could that be enough to take him back to his hometown team? It could be. But if you watch this on Friday and Domani commits to USC tonight, bummer. If he gets to Michigan, what up? We'll do it. We'll put a show out. Maybe another show tonight. Jack, you coming back to the studio? Maybe, maybe people are talking. 
Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Watching live here, guys, hit the subscribe button. We had a thousand people watching live, and we're getting you know 45 minutes or so after the CFP rankings came out. We still have 315 watching live. Please subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Subscribers mean everything to a YouTube channel. It gives us more opportunity to grow, to be able to bring on producers like Jack, my co-host Harrison, etc. People got to make money. Subscribers, it grows our audience, and we really appreciate everything you guys do for the show. Noah, or I'm sorry, Noah, <laughs> Nathan, Nathan Brumfield, how many touchdowns does Haskins get this weekend? I'm putting the over-under on three. Jim Harbaugh is a guy who understands, I think he understands life pretty well. I really think Jim Harbaugh is a pretty um, a good understander of the greater picture, especially in college football. And he knows everyone in the college football landscape, media, fan. Coaches, other players, everybody's going to be watching Michigan. They're the only game out in town, Saturday night, Iowa. Michigan's the talk of college football. If they have the chance, he's going to tell his team, let's go out, get this for our our guy, our guy, Hassan Haskins. Let's win this guy at Heisman. Let's make the top two guys in the Heisman, both Michigan guys. And part of that is going to be Hassan Haskins scoring all the touchdowns Michigan potentially has outside of maybe a longer 30, 40, 50, 60 yard breakout from another player. So I'm going to put the number three. I really think that Michigan, if uh, all things considered, they're just going to hand them the ball off four times anytime they get inside the 10 and hope that one of them ends up in a touchdown like they did over and over and over again this past Saturday against Ohio State. Forearm shiver, quorum injury update. I haven't heard anything different coming out of the Ohio State game. And I maybe I've missed something um, that that you guys know, but he was hampered three weeks ago. He was limited last week, and he played against Ohio State, and he had three or four big time plays, two really big time plays right after halftime. The first two plays, Michigan had the ball on offense Saturday after halftime. They stopped Ohio State three and out. It was Hassan. It was Blake Corum. And then another Blake Corum, which set up a Hassan Haskins touchdown. So unless something tweaked there that I haven't really paid attention to or don't know about yet, I expect him to be back playing against Iowa 85 80% with all likelihood being near 100% for the college football playoff on December 31st. Shall not be infringed. It's like that guy on YouTube today, uh, Jack, uh, infringing on Cowboys report. This guy shall not be confringed. Uh, cease and desist if you infringe on us. Let's just say that. So this guy is not in that crew. How much of a chance do you think Michigan has against Georgia? I think they can beat Iowa and Cincinnati. Agree with you there. Those are the next likely two opponents. Of course, Iowa this Saturday. And then Cincinnati, if both teams hold serve, as long as Alabama you know, doesn't beat Georgia, it will be Michigan versus Cincinnati. What a turn of events for Michigan. You beat Ohio State, and they've got to turn around and play Cincinnati, another Ohio team. Who is their head coach? None other than the coach who was the interim coach the last time Michigan beat Ohio State in 2011. Luke Fickle, part of that 6-7 and seven disastrous 2011 interim season for the Buckeyes. And I think Jim Harbaugh going with a lot of motivation. Hey, this is Ohio State junior, and I think they would beat Cincinnati. Where I'm putting Michigan season at right now is no matter what happens from now on out, they brought me joy. Harbaugh's back. This program has an identity once again. And if they lose to Iowa and don't make the CFP, I'll be so disappointed and bummed. But I don't want to be disappointed at the players, just at the lack of mutual fun we're going to have as fans and of this program over the next month leading up to CFP. Beat Iowa, no matter who it's in the CFP, as long as maybe it's not Georgia. If they lose to Alabama, like, that would be a bad matchup for Michigan in the semifinal. If it's anybody else in Georgia, Michigan should win, I think. And then you take your chance against Georgia. They'll be favored by about seven or eight points against Michigan in that national championship game. And if Michigan can just do what they did against Ohio State, bring it like they have all season, hey, folks, you could be looking at your next national championship Wolverine team. Should J.J. McCarthy be a Heisman favorite next year? No, no, he shouldn't. Um, he's not even going to be Michigan's starting quarterback, to be frank. Um, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens to J.J. McCarthy. People have made the Jake Fromm-Justin Fields comparison recently, and I think it's pretty apt. Uh, if you remember, Jake Fromm took over uh, you know, for Jacob Easton like in the second game, so not the same comparison there. But they had five-star superstar Justin Fields ranked higher than J.J. McCarthy, George did, in 2017. But true freshman quarterback Jake Fromm led them to the national title game to overtime. They lost to Alabama. And their head coach made, looking back, people say that was a bad decision because Fields is a better quarterback. Fromm never took him back there. But how are you going to bench a freshman quarterback who takes you to the national championship game? Well, folks, 
you might not believe it, but Cade McNamara and J.J. McCarthy technically have the same eligibility, although they're two years apart, right? Cade McNamara has three years of eligibility after this for Michigan, if he wants to use them. Maybe he won't, maybe he will. We'll see. If he wins the Big Ten title, even if he loses in the semifinal, you can't bench him. I'm sorry, you can't bench him next year. You gotta give him at least one more year of starting before potentially, uh, you know, you turn the reins over to uh, J.J. in the 2023 season. So I don't think Cade McNamara... Uh, I'm sorry, I don't think J.J. McCarthy will be a Heisman candidate next year. And I don't think he'll even be a starter for Michigan next year. Well, I'll get back. If he plays for another school, it could be a Heisman candidate. Maybe if once he gets in there. But if he's playing for Michigan, he'll likely be a well-used backup quarterback. And he will not be a Heisman candidate. So, look, we took a risk here tonight. Uh, my, the team's like, hey, Michigan, let's go live show. And we have a lot of live shows here on Michigan Football uh, at Chat Sports. Every single week, we've got our Cowboys, our Raiders, our Chiefs, our Bears, 49ers, uh, any given Thursday. We've got five, four or five watch parties every Sunday for the NFL. Don't do a lot, ton of college football live. And, you know, I don't know if the appetite's there. So I want to know from you guys, do you want us to do this more often? Should we start doing one live per week leading into the college football playoffs? Should Michigan beat Iowa on Saturday? Give me some whys. Give me some ends. Let me know. I will do what you tell me both in the live chat here. I've got Blake saying yes, Tess yes, Jonathan yes, Nathan, uh, YMP, Gage, Kevin, Steven, Terry, the Manalist, Terry Powers, Jerry Squilly, uh says I hate to lose JG the portal. Absolutely. Travis says yes. Um, Nathan. Becky and Chad, yes. Scott, yes. So pretty much unanimous yes at this point. If that continues here uh, on the uh, uh, on demand and we put this video out on Friday, we will do a live video next week and at least one every week through the month of December. Before we take Kevin's question, toss up on the screen there, Producer Jack. I do want to remind you guys, follow me on Twitter. It's at James Yoder. Um, it's easier to get news out in a more real-time basis on Twitter than, of course, YouTube, although we do on YouTube put things on the YouTube community tab. But do a whole video, producer, lighting. It's a big operation here. Um, you know, we can't give everything to you instantly in that facet. So Twitter is where if you want instant information from me, it's at James Yoder. Uh, I said it. Anybody who watches this live and follows me before the end of day Wednesday, which will be December 1st, I will follow you back on Twitter. It's at James Yoder. What is what does this season do for our recruiting? We'll see, right? I think this past weekend is paying dividends. I think there's a at least two players, one of being uh, them being Keon Sab, who's now committed to Clemson, uh, another four star who is out in Southern California, whose name just escaped me at the moment. I apologize, I don't have it in front of me. Um, both top 150 guys in the secondary that are going to commit to Michigan in the next two weeks, right? Uh, they're probably going to steal one player from Notre Dame. Cool, another four star guy. Jermani Jackson, 50-50. I don't know. I don't have a great feel about that one yet, although if he's not coming now, he was never going to come. I think Josh Connolly, the five-star offensive tackle from Washington, I think he'll be a Michigan guy as well. I think ultimately it's going to do good for 2022. This class we're in now is going to pay huge dividends going into 2023 because Michigan will be the hot team coming out of this 2021 college football season. Bill Horner. Maybe Jack will take one question after this. Does that sound good? Good. One more after this. Bill Horner. So appreciate everyone watching live. Should we sit quorum to make sure he's 100% for the CFP? I think you approach it like Maryland. You don't need him to win this game. He's not bringing any skill set that is going to uniquely beat Iowa, right? If you have a running game like he did Saturday that Hassan Haskins can um, execute on, get 15, 20, 25 carries, sure. You don't want to get Hassan hurt, that's for sure. So go back to the well. Get some Diamond Edwards out of the backfield. Get some uh, some movement. If you need Blake Corum, like he did against Ohio State, frankly, like he paid dividends. Part of the reason Michigan won was because of a few uh, plays Blake Corum made. Not, not the only reason, but a reason. Then play him. All right, live to fight another day. If Michigan's up two touchdowns at any time, 10 points I even say, and they feel like they control of the game, sit him on the bench, make sure he's healthy for the college football playoff. My guy, Travis Mitchell, one of my day ones, old school Michigan football report uh, guy. Does Harbaugh win national coach of the year? If not, who does? Well, I didn't really pay that much of attention today to the uh, Big Ten stuff, but I, I think what, Mel Tucker win the, couch, the Big Ten coach of the year? Preposterous. No one deserves it more than Jim Harbaugh. Not Luke Fickle. Not Kirby Smart. Certainly not Nick Saban. Mike Gundy? Maybe Mike Gundy? I don't know. But Jim Harbaugh is 100% absolutely the national coach of the year, in my opinion. If they don't give it to him, preposterous, shambles, disaster. We've been hoodwinked 
and, uh, and, and we've been lied to because he has proved it, taking a 2-4 and four team. That, if they played a full schedule, that would have been a 2-7 and seven team last year. You know it. I know it. Turning around to 11-1, and one, hopefully soon to be 12-1 and one, college football playoff. There hasn't been a better coaching in turnaround in college football in my lifetime. Let me know in the comments, folks. Who are you watching the Big Ten championship game with? I have had a formula that's worked this year. It's 11 wins. It's one loss. I watched the first half at home. All right. First half at home with my son, sometimes my wife, usually the son. He likes it a little bit, although he doesn't understand it. He just turned five. And then do a halftime show on Twitter, a little selfie video, give you my take. Come into the studio, watch it here at the Chat Sports Lobby on the 80-inch big screen, and come in here and watch the game. So I guess I'm not really watching with anybody. Son, and then producer Brett is coming in to do the post-game show with me. All right, while we saw you live here, folks, I appreciate everyone who's watching. Stuck around 300 of you Michigan football fans. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'm guessing most of you have uh, because you're here with us, what, two hours, uh, hour, hour and 15 minutes into this live show here on the channel. Appreciate everyone who's watched. We got up to nearly 1,000 live, like 950 or so I saw tonight. Subscribe to the channel. It means everything to me that you would subscribe if you appreciate what uh, opinions and takes and sometimes – inside information that we try and bring as much as we can to uh, to the show. We don't have everything, but subscribe to the channel. We really appreciate it, and we will kind of wrap things up from there. All right, Jack, we cutting it off. We looping it, or we just killing it? Cutting it? All right. So we're going to end the stream here. Uh, as I mentioned, the first 10 or 15 minutes or so of the q and I'm going to put out tomorrow morning. It's a separate video here on the channel, so if you want to relive any of that, share it with your friends. That's where you find it. The last 15 minutes or so, the questions we just took, I'm going to put up Friday morning, heading to uh, New Orleans Thursday for a Cowboy Saints game. So we'll be out of town on Friday, and uh, we'll put that out as a video. But we'll have a Michigan football preview. We'll have rumors heading into the game. I think at least two or three more original videos Wednesday, Thursday, and then maybe Saturday morning heading into the game. So trust me, no one will have more content here on YouTube than us here at the Michigan Football Report. So subscribe. We're going to head off now. Appreciate it. YMP, 1978, nice show. Mark uh, Metchkowski, one of the day ones as well. Jordan Kane, appreciate that. Travis Mitchell, of course. You the man. Hey, Travis, hey, you're going to come to Dallas, man. I got a spot for you. You can stay in my guest room. All good. Tess, Jerry, Mark again, Josh Fademaster, James Lowe, Blake Barry, Ryan C., Nathan Carroll. Uh, he says, go Ole Miss. I don't know about that guy. Um, Nathan's watching with his dad. Appreciate everyone's watching. We're going to sign off now. We'll be back tomorrow with more Michigan Football Report. Until then, go Blue.